unrelated to, to football, but um, I had a golf outing two days in a row. And I went from one golfing, one, one of them was on Friday, the other one was on Saturday. I blacked out on Friday, woke up at 6.30 in the same clothes to go golfing, blacked out probably at like the sixth hole. And then I slept for two hours and I wore the same clothes to go out that night. So I had been wearing the same clothes for three straight days and had been, and had been fairly drunk for three straight days as well. I miss college desperately. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. But it ain't about how hard you hit. And I hit out the park, no question, with all due respect. It's about how hard you can get hit. And you might need, at some point in your life, a little massage on your ass. They keep moving forward. How much you can take, they keep moving forward. Forward. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Moving Forward podcast. Today, I am joined by just Michael. We had some complications with some other people, so Michael and I will be giving you the single episode this weekend. We're going to try to get back to double episodes, but it's been difficult the last couple weeks, but we will try. Um, We're still hounding on Adam and Logan to give us their drunk combine video. Um, They have been unreliable with getting it to to us so far. This is they were glad to go wear jeans to the gym, but this one they are not getting around to doing. Um, besides that, follow us on Instagram, moving forward pod FWD, same thing on Twitter, the TikTok, the moving forward pod, and then YouTube block 11, where I will be posting uh, the video version of the podcast early. So you can see Michael and I's face and watch Michael in anguish as he still tries to finish up a fantasy football draft where he just took a great pick in Devin Singletary. Uh, what, what, what promise do you see in Devin Singletary this year, Mike? Um, I didn't, I didn't see a whole lot of promise in him, but I, I was apparently on auto pick Hmm. um, and really blew that one. I'm disappointed to say the least. This draft is not really going the way I wanted it to. Um, Our punishment for this, for this league is that we have to eat like a a ghost pepper chip. So yeah, the stakes are high and I'm really, I'm really (laughs) shit in the bed here. Yes. um... I had the first overall pick too. Oh, I think that's almost worse is that the know, first I, overall I, pick. I don't like having the first overall pick. Hmm. It's like I took Mahomes, but I'm joking. I didn't take that team. Mahomes. Okay. I didn't know if you played in like some super quarterback. Cause there are some people who play in like a, a super flex league where it's two quarterbacks and sometimes quarterbacks go first. Yeah. No, I, yeah, no, I didn't. Do that. <laughs> All right. That would have been foolish. Well, Let's move on to our actual topics of today. First, we will talk about Michigan State and the University of Michigan. We'll start with U of M because I don't know as much about this U of M team. I obviously watched a lot of them on Saturday, but I was mostly spending my time watching a terrible Wisconsin and Penn State game. Um, Mike, is there anything you saw from Michigan that really jumped out to you um, on their side of the ball on their game? Like they played Western, nothing crazy. Western has been predicted to win the Mac in a lot of scenarios. So they could be a very good Mac team, but Michigan gave it to them pretty good. Yeah. As a central Michigan graduate, um, I can gladly say fuck Western. Um, I don't think Mm. they're going to be shit in the Mac, to be honest. I'd pick them to pick to place last. Oh, to be honest with you, I, uh, I'm a, I'm a bad person and I don't like watching Michigan do well. So I turned the game off after the first half. Also did I, um, yeah, I can't. I can't stomach their success. To be honest with you, it's really, mm-hmm. it's gross to me. It makes me queasy. Mm-hmm. Um, but they looked really good. Um, it sucks that their was his name Ronnie Bell got hurt. Uh, that blows. And their their number one guy, and he was having a great game up until that point. So I don't know. Do you, Do you understand the logic of having your best receiver return punts in a meaningless game against Western? Because I don't get that. Uh, no, that is uh, that's. That's just Jim being Jim there. Yeah, that one doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you have so many freak athletes on your team if you're the University of Michigan, and especially in a game where you don't really need, like, a huge big play to beat Western Michigan. Like, I I know it's a fluke injury, but why are you having Ronnie Bell return punts against Western? It was already – they were already up a significant amount of points, too. Yeah, it didn't make any sense to me at all. I I really didn't get it, and 
I, I, I don't know. It just seems like that's, it's, it's kind of a Harbaugh kind of move. Um, you know, you hate to see it for Ronnie Bell and for Michigan fans. I wish Sean was here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I think Michigan and Michigan State are both going to be a whole lot better than they were last year. Yeah, that's a pretty low bar, too. I think both were two win teams. So, uh, yeah, on the Michigan side of things, um, I really like their quarterback play. I'm trying to think of his name, McCarthy, right? McCarthy, mm -hmm. something McCarthy. Oh, he played God. really well. Um, their running backs are super good. Their running backs are really, really good. Their offensive line's a little bit worse than it usually is, but it makes up for how good their running backs are. Um, their receivers were already super, like, they weren't that deep. They had Ronnie Bell. They have a couple other guys who are like young players, but besides that, they're not very deep. So I don't know what they're going to do as far as receiver. And they usually have a pretty stellar tight end uh, occasionally, but didn't really notice them at all. As far as their defense, uh, Aiden Hutchinson's really, really good. But besides that, you're playing Western. I think the big test will be Washington, who just lost to Montana. So I, I keep on thinking in my head how I, I wanted to hammer Michigan if the line was going to be like three or four points, but Michigan's an entire touchdown favorite against Washington. And I don't know if I can spring a whole seven points for Michigan to beat a Washington team that was supposed to be pretty talented this year. Yeah. I don't know what, what's going on with Washington. Like that kind of game seemed like a little bit of a fluke. I mean, now Montana is one of the better FCS teams, apparently. I don't know, not an FCS guy, but I, I, I that seems like a lot of points for, for an early season game. All right, hold up. I'm on the clock real quick. Okay. I need a kicker. Michael, Michael will be walking us through and his I need a defense. Mm. Now for kicker, how much time do I have left? Not a lot. 15 seconds. Remember Mike, yeah, back to back um, picks. I'm thinking Jason Myers. Jason Myers. I, I'm going to go young. Ho I'm going to go young. Oku. I, yep. I, he's Great in my pick. other player. He's in my other, uh, he's in our league. Yep. Yeah. Young way. I have him in my league. And then young for Hoku. defense, the top available right now, Broncos, Browns, Colts, Patriots. I think you got to go Browns. I think they got a lot of really good front seven play can okay. force a lot of sacks. All right, Jacob. Good call. All right. And that draft is done. My team is complete. All right. But yeah, um, scoring seven against the part, it, it can be fluky with like some games where like an FCS school puts up a ton of points, but losing 13, seven feels like you were just dominated against Montana. Yeah. It's weird. I, it's definitely weird. I think I'm this, very interested to see that game. This game might scream big under to me. Um, I'll see what my Saturday card looks like. I'm more focused on the Thursday night NFL game, but let's move on to Michigan State. Absolutely Molly Wops Northwestern, 38 to 21. Um, Michael, was your erection raging or was it just me? Oh, yeah. Full blown stiffy for the whole three and a half hours that the game was on. And uh, it's just cool to see that we have arguably the greatest running back of all time in Kenneth Walker, the third. So yeah. um, that's very exciting. I think, I mean, it's, it's championship or bust at this point. So I don't yeah. know. I'm hoping championship. I'm hoping for six wins because I bet they're over win total at the beginning of the year. And after that first game, I'm feeling very, very good about it. And I feel pretty good against, uh, against Youngstown state. I think they're going to win, but it's always been a thing in the Mark D'Antonio era. I hope it's not a thing in the Mel Tucker era where somehow they struggle a little bit with under with shitty opponents like this in the first couple of weeks. So I'm hoping Michigan state covers their spread. I don't know what it is yet. They, I haven't seen any lines for it, but I think it's probably going to be somewhere around 21 points. Uh, I don't know how comfortable I feel taking it, but I'd like to see the receivers get more involved in the next game. See Peyton Thorne air it out a little bit more. Uh, Cause I didn't get to see a whole lot of that. I saw a lot of great plays from receivers, but Thorne didn't really throw the ball that much. Well, no, I mean, and that's kind of probably the product of Kenneth Walker, the third having 270 yards, but um, when was the last time you saw like a competent Michigan state offense? It's been so long. Yeah, I know. It, it's probably uh, 2006, 2017, the year that they went nine and four with Lewerke as the quarterback was the last time probably. But even then, like they weren't amazing on offense, but like this was the best offensive showing that I can remember. I mean, maybe like since Connor cook. Yeah. It's been a long time. Did, is there anything you saw from, okay. One super underrated move before we move on from this game. Connor Hayward has finally found his perfect position at tight end. Oh yeah. 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 He, he was not great at running back. I didn't think he was fast enough um, at wide receiver. I didn't think he was quick enough. 
And at tight end, I think it's perfect. Like when he gets matched up with these linebackers and one-on-one coverage, he is exploiting them. And he had some awesome blocks. Like he sprung that cutback touchdown for 14, nothing. He sprung that with that edge block. And it was awesome. Like I think Connor Fayward finally found his perfect spot at tight end. Yeah, bro. He's built like a, like a muscular carrot. Yeah. He's he's like Doug Martin up here. Yeah. It's just like Doug Martin 2.0. He is a muscle hamster. Yeah, he's insane. He's he, I like he keeps like growing exponentially. Like he's going to be the size of like two school buses by the time he graduates. At the yeah. End. He's so big, but mm-hmm. I loved what I saw from Michigan State this weekend. Yeah, I loved it too. Looking forward to this this upcoming weekend. I don't see any issues with them winning their game, knock on wood, hopefully. Um, it's going to be a real test when they play Miami in two weeks, and I look forward to that one. So uh, big games this weekend. I'll probably bet on Michigan State because, you know, why not? Because just their ha- just their win and their happiness alone won't do it for me. I have to bet on them and lose money in that too. Let's move on to love-hate. Um, speaking of Michigan state, this is a good transition into my love, which is 7. AM drinking Michigan state has a noon kickoff. I've been telling people all week that I will plan up working, waking up at 7. AM drinking while I shower and get ready to go out and tailgate. It's been two full years since I've been able to go to a real tailgate at Michigan state. And I cannot wait to be 7. AM drinking. It will be the happiest. You will ever see me wake up at 7. AM. I think every year when Michigan state has their first game. Like the happiest I will be by far. Yeah, I'm. Ve- I'm very excited for you. I wish I could go tailgate. Um, it's they don't have like tailgates God, at just... Giants games. Uh, no. I mean, not maybe. I don't know. Um, maybe I don't even know San Jose State's out here, but like they gave Oregon um, a run for their money in Week One. I know they got votes for the AP poll this weekend, mm. which was cool, but um. Yeah, man, I can't. I wish I could tailgate. That sounds like so much fun. Like that, oh, just a cold beer at six thirty in the morning. Yeah. What's your out. best? What's your best tailgating, like early morning college memory or story that you have? Early morning. Yeah. Um. Something bright and early. Unrelated to, to football, but um, I had a golf outing two days in a row. And I went from one golfing, one, one of them was on Friday, the other one was on Saturday. I blacked out on Friday, woke up at 6.30 in the same clothes to go golfing, blacked out probably at like the sixth hole. And then I slept for two hours and I wore the same clothes to go out that night. So I had been wearing the same clothes for three straight days and had been, and had been fairly drunk for three straight days as well. I miss college desperately. Yeah. I'm basically reliving my college youth and Michigan state right now, where it's like the perfect thing where I go there when I want to party and just stay at Elena's house. But then I don't think about school ever once. It's awesome. But for me, probably sophomore year, Michigan state played Michigan at home, it was at home. It was the year that they lost. They lost the game, but it was at home, and it was a twelve o'clock game. And I just remember waking up, and like this was during my big twisted T phase. I pounded one before I even got in the shower, and then I chugged one in the shower. And then afterwards, I bought a bag of twisted tea, and we were just going around campus at seven thirty in the morning, passing a bag of twisted tea while people smack it and just suck out of it. And it makes me cry to think that, you know, I don't know how much more years I can do with these shenanigans. Yeah. I miss the shenanigans badly. All right, Michael, what is your love for this week? Um, my love for this week is uh, PA announcers in 2K 2022. Um, so that means like the Detroit Piston or Detroit basketball guy will be announcing Pistons games in 2K 22. I'm still not going to buy the game. I haven't bought 2K in like four years. Mm but I thought that was pretty cool. I think that's really cool. And I think it's a really good um, segue into my hate. Um, 
which we'll just, we'll bring up now. It's going to be wasting money on 2k. It's the same game every year. I know hundred percent that I'm going to buy it the day it comes out. I've already pre-ordered it. Um, I'm really excited. Um, watch my rebuilds on my YouTube channel, Loth 11. I'll be rebuilding NBA teams every, all 30 of them. Um, but it's really exciting. I you really don't really even play it for the gameplay anymore. I play it at the very beginning of the year and I see if I like the game itself. And that means I'll probably play that version of it more, maybe my team or uh, games online, but I just like drafting teams and doing franchises. It's really fun. NBA is my favorite league. So just feels like it's a must every year to buy 2k, even though I feel like I'm wasting my money on Madden because I haven't really played it all that much, but I do like the game, but 2K, you're about to get $70 from me in a couple of days, so you're welcome. Yeah, I, I got off the train. I don't even remember the last Ever time. since I dropped I 81 like, on you with Vince Carter on the Memphis Grizzlies. Is that like, what, 2K13? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that might have been it. That might have been the last one I bought. I usually, like, my all my roommates always had it, so I would play with them. But, mm-hmm. like, I never, I, I don't know, I never, like, played the – the modes other than like quick play like with people yeah so. no i uh, me and my friends over we did when i got my ps5 did an eight person everybody rebuilt their team like drinking game we did it for like five hours like a boys night it was pretty fun i like it so i i, I enjoy it but i know i'm gonna hate myself for giving them 70 dollars. but i'm a working man now so i guess i can afford it yeah, good for you yeah. all right uh michael what's your hate my hate pretty simple one is just microsoft word i've been having to use it at my job it's the fucking worst Mm. you literally can't make a worse program for doing anything other than like writing an essay like it it just sucks i don't have anything else to put we don't need to dwell on it i just wanted to vent a little bit about how fucking awful that thing no i'll i'll double in on you because they've they created a dark mode on the mac And now like everything is black and all my words are white. And then also whenever I start typing, like, like they don't, it's like they're right up. There's no margins. Like I'm right at the top of where the letters are. And I'm just so confused. And I have to give myself like an uh, extra like return key to go down a little bit more. But then when I view my document and I print anything, or if I do anything like that, like I'm too far down. I'm like, why don't you just make it how it's going to look before I print? Like Microsoft word is garbage. Yeah, fuck Microsoft Word. It's an anti-Microsoft Word podcast. Yeah, this is super... Yeah, yeah, Google Docs. I like Google Docs a lot more. Yeah, shout out Google Docs. Yeah, shout out Google Docs. All right, moving on. Something that we will actually enjoy talking about. Michael and I both saw Shang-Chi yesterday. And I think that we both can agree... um, I went with some people yesterday who said that maybe it was in their top three or top five of Marvel movies. Huge overreaction in my point. But I think it's anywhere between... 10 to 15 for me in Marvel movies. I think it was really, really good. I think it's outside my top 10. I'm not going to break down what my top 10 is, but I really like Shang-Chi. It was so different, the action, than a lot of the Marvel movies we see. And I really like it. Um, I've always been a big fan of karate movies and stuff like that and just how fluid the fighting feels. And I don't know. I really liked it. Combined with some other things that were really good, I thought the plot was great. Um, Just a really, really good movie. Uh, overall, we'll get into spoilers in a second, but Mike, what is your overall enjoyment or unenjoyment of, uh, yeah, Shang-Chi? overall, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a, it was a good movie. Um, a, not top three, not, it's probably like right on the outside of my top 10. Mm-hmm. I would say for me, probably in that, that 12 to 14 range. Um, I loved all the action. I loved the, the colors. The cinematography was great. My only issue with it was the story. I just think we've seen so many origin stories that it's like, you know, when are we going to, when are we going to see like a different kind of plot? You know, this one was kind of by the numbers, but other than that, I liked every part of it. Yeah. I don't know. I enjoyed the story. It was, um, I I don't think it's too marvelly. I do enjoy origin stories. I do like how he's already being tied into future things. So it's not going to feel like he's out doing his own stuff. He's obviously um, spoiler alert me now activating spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie, skip through this part until we get to NFL pick them. You'll see the timestamp in the description of the podcast. Um, I did like how Trevor was in the movie, the original Mandarin, super funny. I thought he brought a nice comic relief. I don't know how you felt about it. In other movies, I've never been the biggest Aquafina fan, but I actually really liked her in this movie. I didn't mind her all that much. Um, the sister was awesome. Like her and her blades, like 
She was also hot, which kind of did it for me a little bit. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I really liked the movie. The only part that I had a problem with was maybe like how there's a mythical jungle that has all that stuff. Like I've been fine. I would have been fine if it was like this ancient civilization that like knows like this form of karate that like cannot be taught to like people with like hate in their heart or anything. And that had nothing to do with flying dragons and stuff like that. I think I I would have been more happy with that, but some of that stuff was a little weird. I thought the dragon battle with like the soul sucking demon was pretty sweet though. So I thought I, it, I thought it looked cool, but building off of that, I thought that I just like I, I really liked the first two thirds of the movie, you know, where it was like just it was Shang-Chi, it was his sister, and it was his dad, and it was like basically about their family conflict. I didn't really think it was a little it, it still ended up good. I didn't hate it, but like the whole like last third of the movie where they're in the oh god, what's the what's the village called? Low Tai, something Low, like that. Tai Lo. Tai Lo. Um, I thought it was it was cool. I just like I wasn't I, I, I thought it would have been cooler if they would have stuck with um, a little more realism with the, yeah. like Shang-Chi like battling like the Ten Rings as an organization in the streets. Uh, I don't know like about. Mm, yeah, I don't know. There are some things I really liked. The action looked awesome for as how yeah. stupid um, I think the idea of it was. They did make it look really cool. Um I like Shang Chi as a character. I think he's very relatable. Uh, you know, like I didn't. The only part that I didn't love, um, that's kind of bothering me now. The more that we're talking about it and think, thinking about it, is how they kind of glossed over how he killed his mother's killer. Like they really glossed yeah. over it. Like you know what? I'm a liar. I did do it. Like I can't see like the flashback of you as like a 14 year old doing this and like how it's affecting you. I feel like it glossed over it really quickly. But besides that. Really enjoyed the movie. Looking forward to what Marvel's going to do next, obviously. I think this guy's going to be a pivotal part of Marvel moving forward. Um, let's get into a little bit of what we think is going to happen next. What do we think that these um, 10 rings, what is this beacon? What is it summoning? Your thought? I have no clue. I'm not familiar with the comics in Shang-Chi. I'm not familiar with the 10 rings, really. I genuinely have no clue. Yeah, at first I thought maybe it is summoning these things that the Eternals are about to yeah, fight. Yeah, it's probably but, the Eternals. But based on the timeline, I actually watched a video on this, is this movie actually takes place in as far as the actual timeline later. It happens after the oh, Eternals. After the the Eternals, Eternals happens one week after Tony, Snark, T- Tony Stark's um, snap to bring everybody mm-hmm. back. And this movie is about a year in the future after that. So because the, the original timeline, it was supposed to be Eternals and then Shang-Chi, but it got flipped around somehow. Um, dude, I think them not finishing their shooting, but Shang-Chi actually already finished um, something like that. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it's summoning. Uh, it could be a celestial because um, they're being hinted at in the Eternals movies. Uh, I don't know. I, I really I don't know. Like, I feel like it's got to have something to do with Dr. Strange. Mm-hmm in the in like probably in his movie maybe spider-man i doubt we see shang chi and spider-man though yeah well wong's just popping up everywhere and wong also everywhere. how cucked did you feel that the monster that wong was fighting wasn't actually the abomination they just teased us like that yeah pretty cucked didn't yeah like it. didn't like it either but we won't talk about what if michael's one episode behind um we'll just briefly talk about it really enjoyed what if Ever since the first episode, didn't like the first episode, thought it was kind of a boring premise, but ever since then, they've ever come up with some really fun ideas. The newest Doctor Strange one, which Michael did watch, oh. was really, really good. That one was the best one, in my opinion, by far. Mm-hmm. I thought it was so good. Like the themes they went through, how it ended, how dark it was. I just thought it was like, it was definitely the most like creative thing Marvel's done in, in that show by mm-hmm. far. Agreed. It also and, really expanded the multiverse. Like it, it laid down some ground rules. It, an absolute it, point, yeah. how it can be actually just yeah. de- like by destroying an absolute point and trying to change it, you basically destroy your own universe. Like we saw with everything, like kind of like fading away and then kind of like liquefying almost um, really good stuff. And then at the end, he's just kind of left in his own universe by himself. And he just has to sit there alone, like really awesome. Uh, obviously we're both looking forward to Eternals. I think that movie is going to be awesome. 
And I also think either I obviously Spider-Man, like as soon as those tickets go on sale, I think yeah, what I around Spider-Man. around Thanksgiving, they'll probably start going on sale. I'm going to buy one for the first showing. So looking All forward right. to it. All right, let's move on to now our NFL pick segment. So this was an idea that we were going to do with all the guys, uh, but it's going to be Michael this week. So we're going to go off percentage, uh, not by wins and losses, because obviously some guys might be here some weeks to make picks. Other guys might other picks. Um, Logan did text us earlier and say his for sure gambling pick is CD lamb. Anytime touchdown that is tomorrow or technically today when you're listening with the first game, which is Bucks and Cowboys. The Bucks are currently an eight and a half point favorite against the Cowboys. Cowboys traveling to play the reigning Super Bowl champion Bucks. Michael, what are your thoughts on the game? And then give me your pick. Um, I think it's going to be kind of dicey for Dallas. I think Dak's been gone for a little while. I feel like it's going to take a little bit for them to get back into things. Um, I don't know about what is the spread? Eight and a half. Eight and a half points. A lot of points. They're That's playing that points. they're playing that touchdown number where even if the Bucks win by a touchdown, which you might feel comfortable with, Cowboys yeah. can still cover, which is scary. Yeah, I would probably I would probably not I would probably take Dallas on the spread there. Yep, but we're I going think, we're not we're not yeah. taking winners. We're going spread. Oh, we're we are spread. doing spread? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's too easy to pick winners. Yeah, Dallas spread for me. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to go the exact opposite. I'm going to go with the Bucks minus eight and a half. I could see this ended up being like a 10 point game with the Cowboys driving to maybe close it out. And then the Bucks just kneel out. But I do think the Bucks, they brought all 22 starters back from a Super Bowl team, which has never been done before in the history of the NFL. Um, they're bringing all 24 starters back, even their two special team guys. So they want to count it as 24, uh, 24 players back. Um, they've gotten deeper. They added a third running back. Uh Cowboys just haven't had enough time together. Um, They all haven't been out there working together. Dak's been on a limited snap count, as we've seen from hard knocks. I think their defense is a little bit improved, but not vastly. And I think the Bucs defense is awesome. Uh, So I don't know about the over-under in this one. I could see it being a shootout because I do think this Cowboys offense could score. But I'm going to go with um, Bucs minus eight, and Michael will go with Cowboys eight and a half. Moving on to our Detroit football Lions versus Michael's San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I know Michael's a big fan of them. Mike, tell me why the Lions are going to lose by 30, because I think the Lions are going to lose by 30. I think the Lions, what's the spread? Seven and a half. Niners on the road, getting seven and a half point favorites. I I mean, I don't have high hopes for the Lions. Um, New coach, a lot of questions on pretty much every position group. Um, Several. mm, Yeah. Yeah. Mm, is correct. Uh, I don't really, but seven and a half. I'm going to go to San Francisco. I'm going to see, I'm going to say they cover. Yeah. I'm thinking the exact same thing. Um, I don't, we went against each other in the first one, but I don't think so. Uh, I think the lions, like, who are they going to throw to? We haven't seen their yeah. offense really like usually in the preseason, you get one game where it's the most of the starters playing together. We didn't see that one time from the lions. Swift's been out a long time. Sewell's still trying to get used to right tackle. Also, by the way, Dan Campbell, if you want to be smart, please move Sewell to left tackle, his natural position, and let Taylor Decker play right tackle. Like, Decker's been in the league longer. It's going to make more sense for him to play right tackle. Please stop doing making Sewell do this. All right, moving on. I think, like, obviously, I, I, I love the Lions. They're my team. It's hard to root against them. But I'm not going to bet on the game, obviously, because I don't want to do that. But – I, I do not like the Lions in this game at all. It's going to be very few times this year that I like the Lions. think they're going to be bad, and I'm okay with it. They're going to keep rebuilding. So if they want to get picks, they can get picks. Moving on to an absolutely great game, Patrick Mahomes versus Baker Mayfield, the Chiefs versus the Browns. Chiefs are favored by five and a half points. Michael, where, where do you see in this Ooh. one? Chiefs and Browns, this is probably, my, in my opinion, the best game this week. Yeah, it's the best game for sure. Um, at Kansas City, uh, I mean, it's probably going to be a Mahomes kind of revenge tour this year. I I don't know. Five and a half, you said? Five and a half. Do the Chiefs win by a touchdown? Or do the Browns I say, pro- I would say probably. I would say that I would take Kansas City on that. Kansas City Chiefs. Um, yeah, 
I'm actually going to go the exact opposite. I think the Browns are going to keep the ball on the ground. I think they're going to run it a whole lot. Um, I think Baker Mayfield is a quarterback who might not win, will win you games at times, but he's also not going to lose you games. Um, I really like that. I think that wide receiver for the Chiefs is really, really, uh, it's not that deep. And there's one weakness of the Browns, which is their secondary. So I think that plays in really well. Um, I think it's going to come down to how well have the Chiefs upgraded their offensive line after how struggle, how many struggles they had in the Super Bowl. Obviously, whatever offensive line they have put together hasn't played together much. And I think that front four, um, that defensive line for the Browns is absolutely stellar. So I'm going to take the Browns on this one. I feel pretty good. And I might even sprinkle some money line. Uh, sneaky Chiefs losing Super Bowl hangover in the first game. Uh, I like the Browns this year. Um, which will get me into one of my futures later, but I like the Browns. I like the Browns as well. I just think at Kansas City, you know, it's the midday game, first first kickoff of the season. I I just got to go with Kansas City on that one. I respect that one. Um, I think we'll both end up taking the same thing as this one. I think this one's a little bit uh, easier for me, but the Packers heading down to play the New Orleans Saints. Packers, three and a half point favorites on the road. I'll start with this one. Um, I think the Packers are going to mollywop the Saints. I think Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams are going to be on a fuck you tour the entire year. If you want to take Devontae Adams to be an anytime scorer every single game this year, I think you will make money more likely than not in each game if you bet this. I think Devontae Adams is at upward of 15 touchdowns. Um, I think Devontae Adams is going to want out after Rodgers leaves. I They're basically said that this is their last dance. They're not the championship winning team of the Bulls, but – Man, these guys play well. I, I think the Packers kill them. I'd be pretty comfortable. I might even, first gambling tip, I'm going to take the Packers. I'm going to move their line to minus six and a half, get awesome odds on that, expecting them to win by a touchdown. I'm going to take the Packers. And that's also one of my gambling picks is to move the Packers to six and a half touchdown winners. Yeah, I do the same thing. I, I mean, New Orleans, Teddy Bridgewater, I don't think they're going to have a lot of juice. Um, I think I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be a fucking demon this year. Um, Jameis Winston is the quarterback. Winston, sorry, I think I think Aaron Rodgers is also going to be a fucking dickhead this year. I think he's probably going to go crazy. He's the reigning MVP. Um, yeah, I'm, I, that, I think that's a no brainer. I'm going Packers. And the game that will kill us inside when we watch it will rip our hearts out to watch Matthew Stafford put on a Rams jersey. Sunday night football. The new SoFi Stadium in LA. The Bears travel out to take on the Rams. I took Justin Fields in our fantasy league, hoping that eventually he'll be the quarterback, but I do not want him to be the quarterback for this one because I think that the Bears are about to get killed by the Rams. Yeah, it's just going to be another uh, Matthew Stafford kicking the shit out of the Bears thing. I'm going to love to see it. It's going to hurt a little bit, though. Um, what'd you say the line was for this? Uh, seven and a half. So Oof. they're. Vegas is hedging their touchdown winners for the Rams saying like you want them. You're going to have to get them a win by nine, win uh, by 10. Yeah. I don't know about that one though. Yeah. Huh. What do you think? Give me your thoughts. Um, you my thoughts are Matthew Stafford has played the Rams or played the bears a lot of times. He knows this team very, very well. They're going to be very well prepared. I think the Rams defense is one of the best in the NFL against a very, very bad bears offense. I could see this game being very low scoring at first in the first half, the bears keep it close, maybe a field goal, but I see the Rams busting it open in the second half. Uh, the bears defense is kind of like that Jaguars defense for me, where they're really good for one season, but they're now continuing to get worse and worse as they get older. Uh, I'm going to take the Rams and the points. Um, a little tease action. If anybody likes teasers, um, I will be teasing the Buccaneers, the Niners, and the Rams down to one point favorites. I think that gets you to plus 150 if they all win by more than one and a half. Bucks, Niners, Rams. But I'm going to take the Rams to cover seven and a half as well. Uh, yeah, I'll take the Rams as well. Mm, you seem a little scared about that one, Mike. Yeah, I just don't, I don't love a seven and a half. I don't love a seven and a half. It's a no. scary spread. All right. We're ending with the Monday night game. Ravens at the new Allegiant black death ball in Las Vegas. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a bunch of like old Oakland Raiders fans, or it's going to be like a bunch of just bachelor and bachelorette parties out there in Vegas. So I'm kind of curious to see what that's going to be like, but Raiders, this is a total trap game for me. Like, 
I think a lot of people see the Ravens only minus four and you're going to want to hammer the Ravens. I think there's something sneaky about this Raiders team in the first game of the year. The Raiders always start the season really well and then fall apart in the second half of the year. They've done it every year. John Gruden's been their coach. So I'm a little nervous, but in my head, I'm saying take my head is telling me to take the Ravens. My heart is telling me to take the Raiders. I don't know what to listen to. Um, I'm going to take the Ravens. I, I don't, I don't really know. You don't think it's that deep? I don't think it's that deep. I don't think uh, the Ra- the Raiders really have a whole lot, but I, I really like, I'm kind of a Lamar fan and I want him to really go off again this year. I know he's been disappointing in the playoffs, um, but oh man. Yeah. I'm just going to go with the Ravens. I'm just going to go with the head pick minus. What did you say? Four and a half. It's not that. Minus four. It's nothing. I'm going yeah. with the Ravens. Yeah, uh, not much to say. Uh, still going back and forth. A lot of people have been hearing a lot of buzz about people liking the Raiders in this game. I guess depending on how good my weekend goes for picks, I might do something different. But you know what? I'm going to go with the Ravens for now. I'll, I'll go with Mike on this one. We've gone the same for the last three of Packers, Rams, and Ravens. I like the Ravens offense. I think they can put up on a bad Oakland Raiders defense. This Raiders defense did not get better from last year. Sorry, Las Vegas Raiders defense. And then also they're still struggling on offense. They have Kenya Drake. Now they have Josh Jacobs. There's a whole lot of questions at who their number two wide receiver is going to be. Brian Edwards, maybe Henry Ruggs was bad last year. Darren Waller is really, really good. That's the only bright spot on their team. Offensive line is bad. You know what? I overthought this, Mike. Thank you for pulling me back to the other side. It's, it's the Ravens for me. And now let's get into our best gambling picks of the evening. Um, Michael, I don't know. Do you have any good picks for this weekend? Um, you Do you have any? Because, you know, I, as I've said, I've been off of the gambling. So I'm scrolling through a couple games right now. All right. I'll start with my first one. Um, first of all, uh, future Browns to win the AFC North. I like that. Also, uh, Washington football team is not the favorite to win the NFC East, but I'm going to take them. So my two futures will be uh, Browns and Washington football team to win their perspective divisions. I like those. Um, Some other ones, I can see other things happening. I'm really confident in those two, but piggybacking off that um, Washington at home against the chargers, the chargers were a favorite for a little bit. It's flung back to Washington as the one point favorite. It's basically a pick them at this point. I like the Washington football team. You can take them with the point. It's at plus 100 odds. Really like it. I think their defense is a lot better than the Chargers. And uh, I also like their offense a lot better this year. I like Gibson. Uh, I like Logan Thomas. I like Curtis Samuel. Uh, and I like uh, Terry McLaurin. So I, and I have Ryan Fitzpatrick as my fantasy quarterback until finally Justin Fields decides to start. So yeah, I'm going to go with Washington football team minus one. That's my first pick. And then also the futures I threw in there. But Michael, good pick for you. Let me um, right now. Well, a future for me, uh, Rams are plus 1100 to win the Super Bowl. Um, mm. Third best odds behind the Packers and the Chiefs. I would I would sprinkle that I throw a little bit of money at that one. I, I really think Maddie is going to have a, a, a really good game. Yeah, 10 to win 110. That's pretty good. Oh, man, I'm trying to find While Michael Aaron continues to look. Hold up, hold up. I'm going to go with, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to come out and play pissed. I think his line for, um, or his, yeah, it's over 276.5 on DraftKings for passing yards. I'm going to, I would, I would throw some money at that. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be a fucking menace this year. Um, so I would do that. His over in yards for the game? His over in yards, yes. All right. Uh, I have a little bit of a same game parlay. If you guys want to take it on um, the Cardinals travel to play the Titans. I think the Cardinals are getting way too much love preseason. I don't think JJ Watt adding that really adds that much. I also don't think AJ green adds that much for them. Um, I like the Titans minus three. I think their offense is prolific and they're going to score a lot of points. And I think they're going to score on this uh, Cardinals team who didn't have the best defense picking backing piggyback off that. I also think the Titans have a shitty defense. So I'm going to take the Titans minus three combined with over 52 and a half to get you a plus 335 parlay on that game. So take those two. That's my last pick. Mike, any more before we end the pod? Yeah, yeah, real quick. Um, Christian McCaffrey to be the first and last scorer um, is plus 800. And I just drafted him first overall. 
in my fantasy league. So I would put, I would All right. That. So as Mike's Michigan bookie, I will be booking his picks and he'll have to pay me when they uh, lose. So when they hit, when they hit, sorry, uh, plus 800, those are some heavy odds. I would feel, I'd feel tough having to pay out um, that money. If those plus 800 and plus 1100 picks actually hit, that would be, yeah, that would suck. That would be tough. It'd be but, nice for me. Yeah. It'd be real nice for you, but this will do it for another episode of the moving forward podcast. One with me and Michael, a little bit shorter, just kind of talking about a couple of things before the long weekend. We will promise to try to get everyone back for our Sunday episode. We need to do a draft. We know we need to get Adam and Logan's video out. So we do apologize for that. We're going to work on that, but yeah. Uh, I post my gambling picks on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, Jacob Loth 11. Uh, I was hot. I've been hot. I hit on Florida state. I hit on old miss. So I'm carrying it over into NFL slash college this weekend. So take those. Uh, yeah. Until next time. Uh, peace. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. But it ain't about how hard you hit. And I hit out the park, no question, with all due respect. It's about how hard you can get hit. And you might need, at some point in your life, a little massage on your ass. They keep moving forward. How much you can take, they keep moving forward. Forward.